Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to walk into the second part of unit conversions, my second video in this series. Um, the question here is why dimensional analysis? Why not use proportions for everything if cross multiplying is that easy? And what we're going to see here is an example of where it gets a little bit more difficult because this conversion is not straightforward. We do not have a formula on our formula sheet that goes directly from kilometers straight to feet. So it's going to take a process. We're going to have to do a couple of steps. For instance, and there are multiple ways to go about it. We could go kilometers to miles and then miles to feet because we have both of those. That's one way to do it. Um, we could also do, say, kilometers to meters and meters to feet. That would work. We have both of those on our formula sheet. In fact, if we wanted to, we could really go kilometers down to meters, down to centimeters, down to inches, and then over to feet. You know, that would work. Uh, what we're seeing here, of course, is the idea that, number one, there's not just one correct way to do it, which is kind of a theme. You know, we're doing our math in this class. There's always more than one way to solve a problem. Are there better ways than others? Absolutely. Okay, so you should probably not choose this bottom method unless you want to go through and do one, two, three, four conversions when you can do it in just two. So either one of these, we're going to get the same answer in the end, so let's just pick one. Okay, the problem would be this. If I wanted to go through and do a proportion problem, I'd have to do this twice. I'd have to set up first a proportion, say, to solve for kilometers and change it to miles. Then when I get done with that, I'd have to set up a second proportion and change miles to feet. So it's going to take me two sets of cross multiplication, two sets of, of, of math in order to get to the correct answer. Now, it's going to take us that anyway. Okay, but what we're going to see is for later, for more complicated problems, this is not the most efficient way of doing it. Similar to how this isn't the most efficient way of doing it. I hope you wouldn't choose that as your method. Okay, so what can we do? Instead, let's use dimensional analysis in this approach. Here's what I know. I'm going to start off by writing off what I know. For instance, um, one kilometer is equivalent to 0 0.62621 miles. I know that. And I know that one mile is the equivalent of 5,280 feet. Now, again, I want to stress, just like I did in the classroom, I want to stress that, yes, maybe you can do this problem in your head. Maybe you know exactly how to go through. So as long as I give you a calculator, you're going to be fine. But there will be a time when you don't know the units well enough to know, am I multiplying or dividing by 0.621? Am I multiplying or dividing by 5280? And you have two chances to screw up. Okay, and if you do either one of them incorrect, you're going to have the exact wrong answer. Okay, I don't want you. I want you to get this correct 100% of the time. So that's what we're practicing now is a method that'll get you correct 100% of the time. So we're going to start off just like we did in the last video. We're going to start off by writing out what we know, and we're going to write it as a fraction. So I'm going to start off by saying I have 10,000 kilometers. And even though it seems silly right now, we're going to write it as a fraction over one. I'm going to multiply that by a next fraction. This is going to be a unit conversion. And in this case, let's convert kilometers to miles. Now I have two options here. I can write miles over kilometers, or I can write kilometers over miles. One of those is correct, and one of those is incorrect. And the way, just like in the last video, the way that I decide how to do this is if I have kilometers on the top here and I want it to go away, kilometers needs to go on the bottom of this fraction. What that's going to do is when I set up my conversion factor and put in my, my numbers in just a second, that would be 0 0.621 miles is equivalent to one kilometer. When I put that in, kilometers on top, kilometers on bottom, they go away. They factor each other out. I'm going to be left with the description. If I stopped right here, I'd be left with the description in miles. But I'm not done because I want to go to feet. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to write out the second conversion factor that I have. When I do this, it could be miles over feet or feet over miles for this particular fraction. I'm going to set it up so because I want miles to go away and feet to remain. I'm going to set up miles to be on top here. It's going to be on the bottom over here because I want it to factor out. I want it to cancel. And now miles goes away. And I'm left with one descriptor. How many feet do I have? By the way, I know that 5,280 feet are the same thing as one mile. So now I can put it all together. Here's what I know. I'm going to take 10,000 over 1. 
I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.621 over 1, which is just 0 0.621, and then I'm going to multiply by 5,280. So, because they're all on top, in the last video, I had a number on bottom, so I ended up dividing. On this one, they're all on top, so I'm just going to multiply straight out. And if I take, then, 10,000 on my calculator times 0 0.621 and then times 5,280, what I get is a huge, huge number of 3, 2, 7, 8, 8, 8, 0, 0, 32 million, 788,800 feet. So that's the dimensional analysis route, and that's why it's important, is because it makes a problem like that very simple to the point where you'll never miss them. If you practice out, again, writing the fractions so that the units cancel, one on top, one on bottom, one on top, one on bottom, we're left with feet. Just as a preview of what we'll go to later on, okay, well, what, what's a more complicated problem? Why would I use that? That still seems pretty straightforward. Eventually, you're going to be asked to do things like, hey, let's take 50 miles an hour. What is that in meters per second? And if you want to go through and change meters, you have to change miles, excuse me, to kilometers and kilometers to meters. So there's two sets of proportion problems. You're also going to have to change hours to minutes and minutes to seconds. There's two more. So if you go through and do proportions, that's going to take you four sets of cross multiplication in order to solve. If I know how to set up fractions, here's my, here's my method. I take 50 miles per one hour. So notice written as a fraction, but notice the hours on the bottom, by the way, hours not on the top. It's not MPH on top. It's mi 50 miles in one hour, the same thing. And I can go through and I can say, okay, kilometers over miles. These go away. Kilometers goes out with com kilometers here. I'm left with the descriptor of meters on the top. Hours on bottom here, hours on top here. Those cancel out. It's flip flopped. Notice that I started with the bottom now. So that means minutes has to go on top here. I'm left with the descriptor of seconds in the bottom of the fraction. I'm going to be left with an answer of meters for every second. How many meters per second is an answer. And this is actually pretty straightforward. I know that 0 0.621 miles is the same thing as one kilometer. I know that 1,000 meters is the same thing as one kilometer. I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. And I know there are 60 seconds in one minute. So I'm going to take 50, I'm going to divide it by 0.621, divide. I'm going to multiply by 1,000, I'm going to divide by 60, I'm going to divide again by 60. And so in one step, I go straight from the beginning. Let me do that for you, 0.621 times 1,000 divided by 60, divided by 60. I end up with an answer of 22.37 meters for every second that we travel. One step. That's why dimensional analysis is a nice method to know. So hopefully this is a nice little introduction. There are still some things we need to learn. You know, how do we get from, you know, kilometer, how do we work with scientific notation when we're talking about like centimeters or or um, kilometers or gigameters or whatever we want to use. Um, we haven't worked anything with except distances right now, so that's going to have to change as well. But it gives you an idea for the method for the math that we need to do. How do we set up a fraction and get things to cancel out so we're left with the units that we're interested in? If you have questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in class. Talk to each other. Work through it together. The more that you communicate with each other and, commu and like work out between yourselves the difficult problems, the happier you'll be later on.